Today, we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 10 through 15, false apostles. Let me read 10 through 12. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be silenced in the region of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. And what I am doing, I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission, they work on the same terms as we do. Now, Paul does not accept funds from the Corinthians for being their minister. Now, this goes against their Greek and Roman culture, and Paul's enemies are going to try and use this against him. Their idea is that they can drag Paul down to their level, then his character won't shine so much and expose their actions. But instead, Paul turns the table on them and brings them up to his level, and they are exposed for what they are. They are exacting, they are insolent, they are tyrannical, and they are greedy. Now, verse 13. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, distinguishing themselves as apostles of Christ. Paul is being very plain spoken here. He's calling them out. They're hypocrites. They have no real grasp of Christian truth. They have shown no real evidence of Christian principles, and their motives are gain influence, exalt themselves, and satisfy their own selfish desires. Verses 14 and 15. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Then their end will, be, will correspond to their deeds. This passage shows us the great power that Satan has in adapting himself to circumstances, to times, and to occasions. And he is able to give this power to his agents to do likewise. Now, Paul recognized Satan as a mighty enemy. Satan employs the utmost skill and strength and will and passion to call up and direct that evil nature that man has. Too often we underestimate Satan's power. Satan knows full well how to play the angel. He once was one. And he also knows that men will fall for a bright and beautiful angel instead of an ugly, dark devil. And the one who calls us to sin seems more like an angel so that we in interpret folly as wisdom. Without the convicting, conviction of the Holy Spirit, men are incapable of seeing that they are in Satan's bondage and subject to the prince of this world. So one takeaway that we can get from these lessons today is we need to be ever diligent and continue in prayer that the Holy Spirit will awaken men to this fact. We also need to be on guard ourselves. A third thing is we need to empty ourselves of any pride or self-sufficiency we think that we have enough skills alone to tackle and resist the devil. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us completely. I'd like to sum this up with 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. These probably are familiar to you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Christ overcame the devil, if we are truly in Christ. No disguise of Satan shall deceive us, and no might of his overthrow us. Thank you for watching today.